In this episode of Intelligent Machine Monitoring, you will learn something about piston, rod load and masses. Yeah, thanks Joost for this short introduction. So today we will talk about the piston compressor at all and finally about the forces we have inside the piston compressor. Um, mainly on the piston uh, rod because that is one of the most important forces. Here on this little screen you see uh, an example of one cylinder which is open and we see the crosshead, piston rod and piston finally and we will talk about the forces on the piston rod. For that we have to know a little bit theoretical background but why we need that forces and why it's so important to know these forces is that we have to know what is our maximum allowed force. Uh, what are our forces which are moving back and forward, so compression and tension loads, and finally uh, what are our mass and pressure forces. So let's start with the theory. In theory we have two different forces which are working on the piston rod. The first one is from all the masses we have here on the piston. The piston, the piston rod, the crosshead and all these parts needs to be moved back and forward from the top dead center in this direction and from the bottom dead center finally in this direction. And depending on how big a piston is, how big a piston rod is, we have different forces inside that um, yeah, complete picture. So we start here with our mass forces. What we see here is one revolution. We start from TDC, go to BDC and go back to TDC, so top dead center and bottom dead center. And in green you see our forces which are caused from the masses. So first when we start on the top dead center, the motor will pull back the piston to this direction. So we start from negative until we have our highest speed and then it has already to reduce the speed again. So our force change here in the positive part and on the other way around when we are here it happens exactly the same. So we have our load reversal here and here at 90 and 260 degrees crank angel. The next force we are talking about are the forces caused from the pressure. If you look to that picture again, we see that we have a crank end and a head end compression chamber. And for sure, when we start on the top dead center, we have a really high pressure in the head end compression chamber, which is pulling the piston already back. And when we are in the bottom dead center, we have a high pressure here on the crank and compression chamber, which is pulling the piston in the other direction. So these forces have as well a big influence to the complete loads which happen inside that yeah, picture. We see here in blue the pressure um, loads which are caused from the head end and crank end uh, compression chamber from the dynamic pressures. And this force will start here in this example in the positive area uh, when the head and compression chamber will pull back already the piston until we have on the crank and compression chamber as well already an increased pressure. So we are here in the negative area until the bottom dead center where it turns back the direction and the next load reversal point is at this point here until we are back at the beginning of the high force. So we have to combine these two forces and the combination of both forces will be the red one here shown in this way. The most important points are the rod load reversal points which are here and here and additionally it's nice to know where is our minimum force and where is our maximum force because we have mainly three things we can build up out of this um, picture. Let's look only to the red one. The first one is we have to guarantee that the crosshead pin is lubricated all the time. So the pin is only lubricated when we have these load reversal points. Based on the API we need minimum 15 degrees crank angel. So in this example we have 180 more or less so that's perfect. But imagine you have for example a broken valve. Then we have for example if a broken valve on the crank end side is here on the discharge side we have always a high pressure inside that compression chamber and that will move the complete curve up or down depending on which valve is broken and we have no or only a very small load reversal. And in this case the crosshead pin is not lubricated because it's pushed always to one direction and we have no lubrication on that side. The second important thing here on this curve are the maximum and minimum allowed ones. So here is the minimum and here is the maximum one. And if that exceeds the manufacturer um, yeah, requirements, then for sure the piston rod can break as well. Last but not least, we have 
the uh, load reversal points as mentioned already and when we combine that with our crosshead vibration signal which is measured here on the crosshead and we see increasing vibration here and here so the vibrations from the crosshead are increasing then this is an indication for a loose connection. Reason is that each time the load change we have a little clearance which is making a knocking sound like knock, knock, knock and in case we have a loose connection this clearance will increase and increase and the knocking sound will increase as well which is visible on the crosshead vibration uh, probe exactly in these two points which is our indication okay we are talking about a loose connection from crosshead to piston rod or from piston rod to piston. So these are the three cases and you see all of these three cases are really important for the protection of the compressor so we have to monitor that really carefully. It is important to know all the different masses inside that uh, part here and the second thing is that we have dynamic pressure signals on head end and on crack end because without these pressure signals we are not able to calculate that curve and finally we are not able to calculate that curve. So for early failure detection and protection these are really important information. Uh, with reference to the API you just mentioned, um, you have only a 15 degree crank angle Correct. window uh, which is required to have a proper lubrication of the crosshead pin. Correct. Um, how can you measure if you are in these design limits or out of these without any pressure probes? Yeah. So, so it, it really requires pressure, management, um, pressure measurement because it's uh, quite ex more on the expensive side yeah. uh, of monitoring instrumentation. Is it really required? So if we have no dynamic pressure measurement, then we can see it maybe on the crosshead vibration probe like mentioned. We see two peaks which are increasing, but these can have uh, different reasons. This can as well wealth impacts or other impacts and without the dynamic pressure curves, we are never sure where these vibrations are caused from. And with the dynamic pressures, and all the known masses, we know, okay, here we have a point, here we have a point. If we have increased vibrations there, then it's our load reversal point. And if these points are coming too close together, then we might have an issue with our crosshead lubrication. But again, when you want to be in spec with the API, you definitely need to have dynamic pressure measurement Correct. and analysis. Otherwise, it's not possible to do this dynamic uh, measurement of the loads, which is requested from the API. Okay. Thank you for this, Jan. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, let us know and um, tune in for the next episode of Intelligent Machine Monitoring.